We make way for Jalen Rose of the Mothership. He can be seen on ESPN's NBA Countdown pregame halftime show every Friday leading into ESPN NBA game telecast. And he joins us on the program. Jay, how are you today? Always appreciate being on with the legend and also acknowledging they could check me out at 2 p.m. Eastern every day on Jalen and Jacoby. And countdown is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Dan. You know, wow. sports don't sleep. I like that. Uh, you know, this is what I – you're sort of the James Brown of uh, the NBA, NBA TV, hardest working man. Absolutely. I take pride in it. I appreciate the multiple opportunities I've been given. I've actually been covering the NBA on television since I was in the league starting in 2002, which means about 19 seasons covering the NBA Finals. If it wasn't Michigan, where were you going to go to? So I took a couple of visits. Usually as a high school player, um, you see where people that you looked up to or from your hometown had success, and you end up wanting to go there. So a lot of people don't know um, the UNLV team led by Larry Johnson, Greg Anthony, and Stacey Augman, the year they won the championship, the Final Four MVP was Anderson Hunt. He attended my high school, Detroit Southwestern. So I always loved UNLV. Steve Smith, now doing a terrific job on television, went to Michigan State. Mm -hmm. Magic Johnson, another big guard that I idolized. So I took a visit to Michigan State. Syracuse, Derek Coleman, like my big brother, Dave Bing, is my godfather, took a visit to Syracuse. Ultimately, I couldn't turn down the opportunity to be the fifth member of the Fab Five, which is why I changed my number from number 42 in high school (laughs) to five when I got to college. (laughs) <laughs> um, I saw this quote from you, and I think you said it to Greeny on Get Up, that you think James Harden could get 90 in a game. And before we get to that possibility, I started to wonder, are you hoping he gets to 90 or at least 82 so we don't have to keep mentioning Kobe got 81 on the Raptors team that you played for? Not at all. See, one thing about being a public figure for as long as I have and we have, the public is going to find things that – uh bring up about your career, things that you said, (laughs) been in the wrong place at the wrong time. That's going to happen. James Harden scoring 90 doesn't take away people when they get a chance to try to tease me about Kobe scoring 81. Here's why. The people that played against Wilt when he scored 100, hopefully some of them are still alive. They may or may not be. Um, For example, somebody like Devin Booker, when he scores 70 points on a Boston Celtics team, we don't brag about those guys. You know why? because they're not as famous as me. So I understand <laughs> how to take it. And, and, and if that's the one L I take for public consumption, I'll live with it because he is one of the top seven or eight players to ever do it. I look at Harden. I'm fascinated. I don't know if we appreciate it. I, don't, I know a lot of people don't like that style, though, Jalen. But I, I watch Harden, and everybody knows he's going to shoot. And for, <laughs> he's still able to do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. And he still hasn't gotten really hot in a game yet this year. That's why I said that he's going to score 90 eventually. Because for those of us who intimately watch these games, he actually goes for it on a nightly basis. He's just not being efficient. Reggie Miller, one of the greatest three-point shooters of all time, probably took 15 or 16 threes in a game once. James Harden averages that on a nightly basis. So on a night when he's getting to the line, making his threes and actually efficient for two, on average he's pushing 70 or 80 just like that. So that's where I came with that math. Uh, We've talked a lot about Luka Doncic this second year. And if you were going to describe his game to somebody who hadn't seen Luka Doncic, how would you describe it? Easy work. And that's the best compliment you could give somebody out there. If you notice, he doesn't seem like he's ever out of control. He's not sped up. He's not bothered by the competition. He is a fierce competitor. He has all of the skills, dribble passes, shoot, dribble, shoot from range. And also, he's a versatile guy that can get you boards, that can make teammates around him better. I like his um, court, on-court personality. He's a fun player to watch. And I appreciate watching Mavs games while while he's out there balling on league pass. Also, we love a good story. The media loves a good story. You know, I I mentioned this yesterday. Giannis won his MVP. Harden got his MVP. We tend to look for the new story. 
LeBron has sort of reinvented himself. That's a new story, and they're playing extremely well. The chances of Doncic winning the MVP this year are what? What would it hinge on? It would hinge on being behind LeBron, being behind Giannis, being behind Harden. Because a lot of that, too, has to do with your team's success. And I don't anticipate the Mavs being one of the top handful of teams in the Western Conference. Even though Russell Westbrook did win MVP and his team was a six seed, but that's when he first averaged a triple-double. This just won't be his year for it to happen. But that doesn't mean over the next couple of seasons he won't be in position to do it. Giannis is top three in the league right now in points and rebounds. And he had 15 assists last (laughs) night. So he's not slowing down at all. Yeah, but it's weird how we do love the new story, though, Jalen. Yes, we do love the new story, but that's the great thing about today's NBA. Now teams and fans can look at their squad and have some sort of optimism, even if they're not contenders. And young players like Luka Doncic will help make that happen. When you start to look at the Clippers' game plan here, how does this backfire on them? You mean as far as load management? Yeah. I didn't want to use load management. I figured game plan. Okay, got it, got it. That's right. We're going we're gonna to try to eliminate low management and rest from the box score. Got I'd it. like to. Okay. I'd like to. Okay, okay. here's how it's going to backfire. The two best teams, the Lakers and the Clippers in the West, will not face each other in the Western Conference Finals because Kawhi Leonard and possibly Paul George are going to miss so many regular season games. It's going to put the Clippers in position to be like a third or fourth seed. So now those two teams might end up playing in the second round as opposed to the Western Conference Finals. Okay. Yeah. I'm still, I, you know, I usually wait until after Christmas before I get a better handle on these teams. And I don't know if I'm going to get a good handle on the Clippers and say, okay, now I know who they are. And, and I know I was told yesterday by a source that you know, there's nothing wrong with Kawhi. This is just the game plan. He's going to play 60 games. The Clippers knew that to start the season. Do you think there's any, you know, aftershocks with the, with the knee injury? Do, do you think that's something that could be still lingering there for Kawhi Leonard this season? So I believe that last year, you know, coming uh, two seasons ago, he played nine games. So last year, having what Adam Silver termed recovery days, and I appreciated that term because when you have an injury the way he did, he deserves an opportunity to to ease himself back into NBA action. But he was in the East last year, and he joined a Raptors team that was always flirting with the number one or two seed the last three or four years, even before he arrived. So they were 17 and four without him. And now you graduate that same theory to the Western conference is just stiffer competition from top to bottom. The thing that the league is going to have to try to figure out, Dan, is there isn't motivation now for current players to want to play all 82 games. It used to be a badge or honor to show up at your job every night. And usually the best players around the game set that tone. So when I first came in the league, players like Michael Jordan, Akeem Olajuwon, Reggie Miller, Stockton and Malone, they showed up to play every night. So that became something that players strive to do. Now, and I blame the media and the fans a little bit on this, because when you start to dumb down everybody's achievements to only ring counting, now all of a sudden a player like Kawhi can say, all y'all going to do is judge me by how many rings I win. So I'm going to not focus on a Wednesday night game in November, you guys are going to pay attention to what I do in the playoffs. And that's what leads to a guy like LeBron leaving Cleveland to go to Miami to get a couple of rings. And then when he gets his rings, guess what he does? (laughs) He leaves again. This is why Kevin Durant leaves OKC, goes to the Warriors, wins two rings, seems to be unhappier in Golden State than he was with uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Then he leaves there and goes to the Nets. So that has created a climate that now players don't value the regular season as much as they should, and that's unfortunate. It's great to talk to you, Jay. Have a good weekend. We appreciate your time as always. Thanks for the love. I appreciate you. That's Jalen Rose, ESPN, ABC, NBA analyst. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV, stream for free on BR Live, or download the Dan Patrick Show app.